Hey everybody, it's Craig with Smartphone M. We got a great face off for you today. Between a couple of heavy hitting dual core processing monster smartphones, the Samsung Galaxy S2 versus the Motorola Atrix 4G. Don't forget to stop by SmartphoneMe.com. Check out the winner of today's face off along with the written review. Also have some video and photos posted from both of today's contestants. All right, let's kick this thing off. Samsung Galaxy S2, quad band GSM. Quad Band 3G also runs on AT&T's HSPA Plus 4G network. Weighs in at 116 grams, definitely the lighter of the two. Got Gorilla Glass. There's a metal rim that encompasses the entire display, as you can see here. I don't know if it's a gunmetal gray or chrome color. Just behind that, you've got a high-grade plastic rim that encompasses the entire phone. You can see it also covers a portion of the bottom. Phone speaker here in the lower right-hand corner. Profile of the phone, it's very thin. It's definitely the thinnest dual core processing phone out there at the moment. One of the thinnest phones, period. Pull off the battery cover, which is made out of a rubberized plastic, as you can see there. Quite durable. Battery, 1650 milliamp hour battery rated at seven hours of talk time. See the micro SD card slot right here, so obviously it's not hot swappable, but it handles up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Got your um, SIM card slot right there. Brain just went completely dead, sorry about that. All right. And let's get that back on. And I think we've got it for the most part. Up towards the top on the back is the 8 megapixel camera and LED flash. On top itself is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack along with one of the microphones. On the right hand side is the power and lock key. On the bottom is the other microphone as well as the micro USB port. And on the left hand side is the volume rocker. All right, Motorola's Atrix 4G, Quad Band GSM, Tri Band 3G, also runs on AT&T's HSPA Plus 4G network. Weighs in at 136 grams, build quality. Again, you've got Gorilla Glass. Battery cover, again, is made out of a rubberized plastic, as you can see here. Chassis on the phone itself is made out of metal, which is kind of nice. Gives it some heft. You can see underneath the battery cover, micro SD card slots, Pop that up. They are hot swappable, which is nice. SIM card slot. Battery, 1930 milliamp hour battery rated at nine hours of talk time. I believe that's the number one out there, period. Here's this phone speaker down here in the lower left hand corner on the bottom. Battery cover, very easy to put back on. You've got your camera, five megapixel camera, dual LED flash, upper left. Microphone. You've got the fingerprint reader, which also acts as a power and lock key. Up on tops, the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. On the right hand side is the volume rocker. Nothing on the bottom and on the left hand side is the HDMI out as well as the micro USB port. All right, let's talk cameras. Galaxy S2, 8 megapixel camera with autofocus and LED flash. Other features include geotagging, touch focus, face and smile detection, as well as image stabilization, video capture, 1080p HD. All right. Atrix 4G, 5 megapixel camera with autofocus, dual AD flash. Other features include geotagging and image stabilization. Video capture is 720p. All right, let's take a look at the displays on both. And let's get back to the home screen on both. On Atrix, there we go. All right. Galaxy S2, we got a couple great displays. Galaxy S2, 4.3 inch. Super AMOLED Plus capacitive touch display showing 480 by 800 pixels. Offers an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, as well as multi-touch. On the Motorola Atrix 4G, you've got a 4-inch QHD TFT capacitive touch display showing 540 by 960 pixels. Also offers an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, as well as multi-touch. On the Galaxy S2, upper left, front-facing 2-point megapixel camera for video calls. You've got an upper left front-facing camera on the Atrix 4G as well. Keys on the Galaxy S2, you've got three. You've got a main menu key and back key, which are touch-sensitive. Then you have a physical home key in the middle. On the Atrix 4G, you've got four touch-sensitive keys, main menu key, home key, back key, and search key. Memory on the Galaxy S2 comes in two flavors, 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes of internal storage, one gigabyte of RAM, and again, you can expand internal storage and additional 32 gigabytes to the use of a micro SD card. Atrix 4G comes 16 gigabytes of internal storage, again, one gigabyte of RAM, and additional 32 gigabytes of storage can be added to the use of a micro SD card. Wi-Fi on the Galaxy S2, 811. 80211 ABGNN, support for DLNA, and HDMI out through an adapter through the micro USB port. Atrix 4G 80211 BGNN, DLNA support, and it has its own specific micro HDMI out. Bluetooth on the Galaxy S2 is version 3.0 with support for high speed data transfer, 
Atrix 4G version 2.1 with support for A2DP. Both of them offer GPS with support for AGPS. Both phones can be used as Wi-Fi hotspots. Processor on the Galaxy S2 is a 1.2 GHz ARM Cortex A9 dual-core processor. On the Atrix 4G it's NVIDIA's 1 GHz Tegra 2 dual-core processor. Operating system on the Galaxy S2, latest version Android 2.3 Gingerbread. On the Atrix 4G 2.2 Froyo. Operating system, or excuse me, the UI on the Galaxy S2 is TouchWiz 4.0 and on the Atrix 4G it's Motorola's Moto Blur. Alright, as you can see I've been to the Android market. Quadrant Center benchmark test is loaded on both and we're off. Looks like we got a good clean start. Alright, we've got both phones running dual core processors. The Galaxy S2 offers 1.2 gigahertz versus the 1 gigahertz on the Atrix 4G and both offer 1 gigabyte of RAM. So, should get some decent scores out of both. Gives you a good shot of the displays on both. Galaxy S2 4.3 inches versus 4 inches. You've got much better pixel density on the Atrix 4G at 540 by 960 versus 480 by 800. All right, we've got one down. Wow. That does say 3545. I haven't seen anything like that out of my Atrix. But we'll wait and see. Here comes the Atrix getting into the 2D graphics. That's the best score I've seen so far on the uh, Galaxy S2. Don't forget we'll run our unofficial speed test to see what, what it's like real world. And a couple more 3D graphic tests and this is the last one and we'll be done. Alright, and the answer is... Yeah, 2020. So, big discrepancy between these two as far as benchmark. The uh, Galaxy S2, big time winner. Let's run our YouTube comparison and take a look at a couple of videos. Both set uh, to default to HQ and both of the handsets are running off the same Wi-Fi network. So, we'll see how well they upload and process and spool and play and we're off. Alright, they give you a good look at the difference between the two. A lot more color is going to show up in the uh, Galaxy S2. Try one more. That was a quickie. Let's give it one more so I can find something worth taking a look at real quick. I don't know what this is, but we'll give it a shot. And we're off. All right, just a look at our YouTube comparison. The uh, Galaxy S2 spooled up two out of the three quicker than the Atrix 4G. 
Again, they're both running off the same Wi-Fi network, both set to default to HQ, and I'll let you be the judge as far as the difference in the displays, which one you prefer the look of. All right, let's try a little gaming. Galaxy S2. Matrix 4G. All right, there's a look at a little bit of gaming on both of our contestants. All righty, what do you say we run our unofficial speed test? You see my clocks are jacked up because I've got one phone, no SIM card, just running off Wi-Fi. Uh, those are always, that's always amusing. All right, I've got advanced task killer in both. Let's kill everything in sight. All right, now that we've whacked everything, let's go ahead and try and run some apps. We'll start with uh, maps. That appeared to be the GS2. Let's go to calendar. That definitely seemed to be the Atrix. Let's go to settings. That seemed to be the Atrix. Atrix home key is much quicker as well than the Galaxy S2. Let's go to Gmail. That was definitely the GS2. Let's try text messaging. That was the GS2. Let's try the market. That was the GS2. Uh, let's try a phone app. That was a GS2. That was actually contacts is what we ended up going to. All right, let's try third party. And it looks to me as if the GS2 is quicker in day-to-day -day operations as well. Not by a heck of a lot. Uh, both of them are very, very fast. But the GS2 does seem to be our unofficial speed test winner today. All right, let's run our little navigation test and navigate to corner bakery all right head north on landsburg circle west on landsburg circle toward cuffing way then turn left onto cuffing way turn left onto la venta road then turn left onto egra road well, as you can hear there, there was no issues with either one as far as grabbing the uh, GPS signal, getting us a route, and also providing voice-guided turn-by-turn navigation. So they both handled it very well. Take a look at the maps. We've got them both on satellite. And again, you've got pinch to zoom, double tap to zoom in and out. Zoom out a little bit. Let's see how it redraws. Works quite well. So that's the Galaxy S2, Atrix 4G, again, very smooth. Double tap to zoom in. No issues whatsoever. There you go. So both of them handle the navigation with flying colors.